One of the greatest castles found in England is Corfe Castle. It is located on the Isle of Purbeck, inside of the county of Dorset in the south of England, and it dates back to the 11th century, following the Norman Conquest. But it is a site where there was history dating back longer, and it is a castle that has shaped the landscape for almost a thousand years. However, it's a place where today the castle is in ruins, and it has been destroyed and blown up following the English Civil War. But it's a castle which has been a royal residence, a siege tower, and also a seat of government and power. But what is the story behind the dark history of Corfe Castle? Join us today as we look at this brilliant fortification, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Corfe Castle was built upon a large hill, which is protected by a number of other chalk hills. It was a site which has been inhabited before, and the Anglo-Saxons used it as a residence, and in particular there was one incident that wrote bloodshed into the castle's foundations. Edward the Martyr, a boy king during the Saxon times, in 978, whilst visiting his brother, was assassinated as an assassin stabbed him from behind in the back, when he approached the gates of Corfe settlement. But following the Norman conquest and William the Conqueror's seizure of the throne, a castle was soon created at Corfe. Between 1066 and 1087, William created 36 castles in England, and to begin with a stone wall was built around the top of a hill, which created an inner bailey. There was also other enclosures added, creating an outer bailey, but to begin with these enclosures and fences were made from wood. However, after time, stone was used, and by the early 12th century, Henry I began to re-fortify Corfe in stone. At a pace of around 4 metres a year, the castle was being built in stone, and local limestone was used to make Corfe a formidable and strong fortress. By the reign of King Stephen, it was one of the strongest in the kingdom, and during the Civil War, it successfully withstood a siege by the king, and he also built a siege castle a short distance away, to fire artillery towards Corfe. This was later used again during the English Civil War. But over the next medieval kings, Corfe remained a rather formidable structure, but during the reign of King John and Henry III, it underwent huge expansion work and new towers, halls and walls were built, including a Gloriette, which was considered a royal residence for King John. The king and queen stayed there many times, and it became a place of imprisonment too. King John held the Scottish hostages, Margaret of Scotland and Isabel of Scotland, inside Corfe in relative comfort, and there was also an oubliette found inside the Buttervant Tower. This was a tiny cell and it was known at Corfe for being a place where prisoners were thrown inside of and simply forgotten. A number of knights during the medieval times were thrown into this oubliette, and they died from disease and starvation, and as King John's reign was under threat, he spent more money expanding the defences of Corfe Castle. Further money was invested into the defences there, and it was considered one of the most unbeatable castles in the country, and this is a legacy that continued following the medieval period. During the Wars of the Roses, Henry Beaufort and his army marched from Corfe to fight during the Battle of Wakefield. But during the Tudor period, the castle remained a royal fortress owned by the Crown, and lived in by the kings and queens for a few days a year, when they travelled around the country. But Elizabeth I sent sold Corfe to her Lord Chancellor Sir Christopher Hatton, and he maintained the castle until it was sold to the Banks family, and Sir John Banks. He was the Attorney General to Charles I, and was a close friend of the King. But as the English Civil War erupted, based on the King's problems, as Parliament went to war with him, Corfe initially was under royalist control. The Banks family stayed loyal to the King, despite the majority of the county of Dorset being held by Parliament. The time came when Corfe was attacked by Parliament, and as John Banks fought for the King, he left his wife Lady Mary Banks in charge of Corfe's defence. During this time she lived at the castle with her children, but she was then faced with the siege. Corfe was besieged by Parliament, but it was held by small garrisons of forces. These stayed loyal, and were heavily outnumbered, and defended the castle by firing back, and also by pouring oil and other substances from the towers, onto the advancing attackers. But as the civil war turned against the king, Corfe Castle was one of the only sites still held by a royalist. Despite only suffering two casualties, the defenders inflicted at least 100 deaths onto the attackers. But the castle was later betrayed, and as the attackers made their way inside the castle, they did allow Lady Banks to leave peacefully. The attacking parliamentarians were so amazed at her defiance that they allowed her to keep the castle's key. But following the civil war, 
Corfe Castle would never be the same. One of the policies following the King's execution was that Parliament attacked former Royalist strongholds and castles to put them beyond military use. They were worried that the Royalists would use them to launch attacks in another civil war, and to prevent this they then slighted the castles. This meant they would demolish the sites with a huge amount of gunpowder, and Corfe Castle was one of those to face the slighting. A huge amount of gunpowder was brought into the site, and was then detonated, which left the place a ruin, and it's incredible to see how much explosive they must have used to destroy the huge fortress. The ruins today are a maze, and they are colossal, still lying in the place where they were when they destroyed. Following this, the villagers nearby then took some of the stone to rebuild their houses, and the castle was never inhabited again. One of the most imposing parts of Corfe Castle is the gatehouse, which can be found inside of the inner bailey. There are in fact two gatehouses, with the outer gatehouse securing the outer bailey, but there was also another gatehouse securing the inner bailey, and the further parts of the castle, closer to the keep. Inside here the guards would regularly be patrolling, and holding cells were also found, where they could interrogate people who were trying to get further access into the fortress. The outer bailey was a place where the soldiers who were garrisoned at the castle would stay and sleep, in wooden huts and sheds, and also other local businesses such as blacksmiths and farmers would keep animals there. Animals were kept for banquets inside the keep, but also blacksmiths and stonemasons were on hand to make repairs to armour and weapons, and also parts of the castle that were falling into ruin. The outer bailey would also link the local people to the site, and it was a very busy area. The inner bailey was much more secure, and was a place where only select people could get access to. It was heavily guarded, and contained other buildings and rooms such as the Great Hall. This was built up against the oldest part of the castle, and this was where entertainment and dancing would take place, as well as large banquets. Like many other fortifications, the Great Hall at Corfe was outside the main keep, and there would also be more luxurious buildings inside of the keep. The keep is the main castle part of Corfe that today stands tall, overlooking and dominating the local landscape. It was 21 metres high on top of a 55 metre high mound, and was a symbol of the power of the monarchy. Today it still stands strong, and inside were a network of large rooms and buildings fit for a king and the royalty. Inside the keep were kitchens, sleeping quarters and other lodgings, and built next to it was a gloriette. This was a luxurious extension to the keep, built by King John, which would contain expensive tapestries and ornate decoration, and would give the king a taste of luxury. This was in a sense a pocket palace, up against a large keep. But when walking around Corfe Castle, what is shocking is a huge amount of destruction and ruin caused by Parliament in the English Civil War. This once incredible castle today stands still very formidable, but it's a place that which could never be used in a military capacity. The ruins are huge and amazing to walk around, but it is a shame that it's been left in this state, and today it would be one of the most incredible castles in the world if it was still complete. But the ruins still are captivating, and today Corfe Castle tells a story of regicide, sieges and destruction, and bloodshed runs through the ruins. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.